Vulcan. Today we will be playing delving into the world and lore of the world of Bothra. The game is Dark Souls 3. And if you haven't heard of a Souls game by now, well, you're not looking close enough. And you are missing a very vital piece of this age of the game. Dark Souls is, at its heart, an RPG. And the game we are playing today is Dark Souls 3, the third installation. Now, it is not the third Souls game. Uh, it started off with Demon's Souls. And they moved to a new storyline, and they called it Dark Souls. And Dark Souls 1 was a huge game. It was enormous. Uh, Dark Souls 2 still did well in money, and Dark Souls 3 came out, and people loved it. Bloodborne was also another game made by From Software, uh, which is the game that made the others with Bandai Namco, and took people took people's hearts with its uh, Cthulhu-esque game style. Today we will create a new character, go through some of the beginning areas, uh, talk to a few NPCs, and talk about some of the story. And hopefully you'll get a chance to view and love this game as much. And we will also be continuing our Dark Souls 1 switch off with uh, our friend. And Dark Souls 2 and Bloodborne will eventually come. And if we get time, we will try to do Demon's Souls. Uh, it is a it is, it's pretty much a dead world at this point, uh, which is really sad. Uh, but maybe we'll get in on a group that uh, does the, uh, the parties. And uh, that's it. Yeah, let's begin. Yes, indeed. It is called Lothric. Where the transitory lands of the Lords of Cinder converge. In venturing north, the pilgrims discover the truth of the old world. Aldrich, saint of the deep. Farron's undead legion, the abyss watches. Lord of the profaned capital. Yom the giant. Truth, the 
lords will abandon their thrones. Well, that could not get more convoluted. <laughs> but it will make a lot of sense later. Um, our person today is going to be after one of my follow followers. His name is uh, Matt. So if you watch this, Matt, this is uh, this is for you character is all about you. Matt, the um Matt the Matt the Proud. Bam. Sounds like a Dark Souls-esque name, right? And we have quite a few things to choose from, and uh, we also have this lovely specimen here. Loincloth is really worth it. Um, we have the knight. Pretty much the go-to in any RPG. Mercenary. Uh, warrior. <laughs> Gotta have a dude with a battle axe. Uh, herald. Kind of like a uh, healer. As well as a, a warrior as well. Using a spear is pretty fun. Uh, thief. Uses the bow and parries and does a lot of dagger killing. Assassin has some sorcery and has the ability to epoch or yeah, I think that's what it is. Kind of like a, a rapier, but, but with a weird handle. Really cool. We have sorcerer, my favorite character, pyromancer. Cleric. Now, um, Cleric is obviously a healer. The Pyromancer is obviously a Pyromancer. We don't know, worry about any of that. Today, we're just going to go for a uh, character I've never really built, and that is the Mercenary. And we're going to go and build a super high dex and intelligence build. And what this is going to do is going to allow us to roll and Burial grip, uh, burial gift, plenty of things to go for. Uh, I'm just gonna take a life ring. Oh, now we can't just go with the base skin color. You gotta go for like some weird really upsetting color that just stands out and there's just no reason for it. So we are unkindled.
You're gonna notice that I roll pretty much everywhere. You notice when I blocked, I still lost a little bit of health. That's it's normal with terrible uh, things that don't block all physical damage. Okay, weird, you don't backstab. You're in the Cemetery of Ash. I, an undead, rise from a grave. With better weapons than everybody else. not a good sign. Backstabbed him. I, I know that's not what it looked like, but I'll see if I can do it on him. No. Scrawny little elbows, blue elbows. And yes, you can fall off, if you're wondering. Fall off at any point, at many times. That was an aerial attack. If you attack from above your enemy, slam down and kill him. Oh, he grabbed me. Not good. Thanks. Damn, I should have dodged left.
And there you have it. Ember restored. Boss beat. There's also a bonfire there, but I'm, there's almost no use for it. And here we are. Firelink Shrine. You'll spend most of the game here. But now we get to kind of meet up with some of the people there. Welcome to the bonfire, unkindled one. I'm a firekeeper. I tend to the flame and tend to thee. The lords have left their thrones and must be delivered to thee. To this end, I am at thy side. Very well. Then touch the darkness within me. Take nourishment from these sovereignless souls. Ah, uh, yeah. Be unkindled is to be a vessel for souls. Sovereignless souls will become thy strength. I will show thee how. Ashen One, bring me souls plucked from their vessels. Farewell, Ashen One. May, May the flames guide. Ah, another one roused from the sleep of death. Well, you're not alone. We unkindled are worthless. Can't even die right. <laughs> Gives me conniptions. I mean, have us seek the lords of Cinder and return them to their molding thrones. But we're talking true legends with the metal to link the fire. Not fit to lick their boots. Don't you think? <laughs> A pleasure to make thine acquaintance, Ashen One. I am but a humble handmaid of the shrine. Trinkets and spells. I've lost little things to ease the burden of a weary traveler. And yes, I'm undead too, but not so charitable as to give my goods away. Ashen one, fetch souls and bring them to me. As is thy want, no? <laughs> So this lady will trade with you. Now uh, you can use souls to buy certain items. And you can bring her piles of ash and she'll sell new items. Ashen one, if my wares are not to thy satisfaction, bring me umbro ash. With ash, I'll fashion new wares. Is it not our sorry fate to sup on death? Sup. <laughs> I believe she means having supper and not corpses. You know, that's, that's what this game is all about. But here is my man. Well, a newcomer, I see. I am Andre. I serve at this shrine as a humble smith forging weapons. You're in search of the Lords of Cinder, I trust. A toilsome journey, I wager. You require good arms. Let me smith ye weapons. I am a smith. Such is my purpose. Weapons and protection are sturdy enough by and large. But when overused, they'll eventually break. 
When their durability is low, repair becomes a necessity. Use a powder, or simply rest at a bonfire. But should chance impel them break, bring them me. I'll hammer them back into shape. They take no pleasure in breaking, I assure ye. So handle them with care. There's uh, two more people to talk to currently. I'm going to talk to one of the remaining Lords of Cinder, in fact. Olda unkindled, and a seeker of lords. I am Ratliff of Corlor. Look not in bewilderment as I say. I linked the fire long ago, becoming Lord of Cinder. If substantiation be thy want, set thine eyes upon my child corpse. This sad cadaver, no need to be coy. Have a closer look. Knowest thou of our purpose? Five thrones will take five lords as kindling for the linking of the fire. The fast-fading flame must be licked to preserve this world. A reenactment of the first linking of the fire. So it is. I became Lord of Cinder. I may be but small. He's not here. Oh, that's right. I have to go. So our first stop is the High Wall of Lothric. So we are in still, we start in the castle of Lothric. Work our way. If you come over here and look right here, there's like a little chalice with a coiled sword. Now, uh, the coiled swords are what are used to make bonfires. But as you can see, there is no bonfire in this room for me to actually take this to. What there is, however, is this coiled sword. So uh, if you noticed earlier, I put a coiled sword into a giant pile of ash, a, a basin in the middle of the Firelink Shrine, and it allowed me to teleport to other places. Uh, since the I guess the sword is what really holds the power. Put it in there. You can actually get the coiled sword later, and when we do, we'll actually read uh, what it talks about, what it says. And uh, here's Lothar Castle. And uh, we will be going to quite a bit of it later, but not currently. This is kind of like the end area that you actually kind of start off with. You look down there, there's like a weird uh, little like blue shining from it out of it. It's a little strange, but we'll get to that later. Uh, it seems that we do have some people that I can summon, and I'm actually going to do this. I'm going to summon it people if I can. Oh, oh, looks like that's not happening. 
Oh, that's all right. We're gonna move on. As you can see, these people are praying down here. They're all praying, and they're praying to these bodies in these trees that are undead. And if you can see all these, they're all looking up. But they're all pretty much undead and mindless, crazy. This is a dead dragon, by the way. I don't need to worry about this one. So what we're going to do is we're going to run up the stair, and then we're going to have to deal with a dragon that's going to breathe fire up there. Oh, or he's going to breathe it down here. So there's this knight up here. Kind of sucks. So we're just going to kind of run past them. And make it to the next bonfire. Oh god. that night. I can kill him. I just need more health. Estus flasks. I need like at least one. Alright, well that's the end of episode one. Uh, that's probably where we're going to start. Stop. We're going to make it to that next bonfire next time and then we're gonna make it to Vort of the Boreal Valley and we're gonna talk to another NPC or two and um, kind of figure out where the storylines going stay tuned